Good evening. I am the only speaker between you and dinner. So, and that got everybody quiet. Awesome. Good evening, my name is John King. I have the privilege of serving as Vice President for Student Life at Roger Williams. I'm in my 20th year. And Coach Amanda, for whatever reason, has asked me to kick off tonight. This is among our most beloved events, bringing together current student athletes, our successful alumni and family members in a fun, competitive environment. Wasn't today fun? Possibly the wettest Captain's Cup ever. I'm glad everybody brought Baylor's. That was a good move, Amanda. If you are a new student and family member, you are joining a special tradition and a culture that is second to none. We are indebted to our longest standing alumni sailors who have stewarded this event for decades and for Coach Amanda for creating and sustaining such a strong and positive culture that emphasizes the engagement and networking of alumni and parents along with sailing excellence. This was an exciting and busy summer in the Sailing Center and on our waterfront, and Amanda asked me to tell you a little bit about it. Roger Williams served as the host site in support of U.S. Sailing and the 2023 Youth Championships during the last week of June. Sailors and family members from across the country converged on campus and in Bristol for more than a week. Naturally, our waterfront and campus facilities showed well. U.S. Sailing turned our lower field beneath the rugby site into site headquarters with a large tent. The sailing center served as a hospitality and viewing center, and family members remarked it was one of the best venues they had ever experienced. Most impressively, it seemed that no matter where the sailors and family members hailed from, they knew one of you, one of our current sailors or more recent alumni. They knew Coach Amanda, and they were very much aware that the Hawks are perennially one of the top sailing teams in the country. This year's Youth Champs served also as a qualifier for World Sailing's 2023 Youth World Championships, and there were seven racing classes. Just three weeks later, our waterfront and facilities served as the venue for the U.S. Junior Women's Single-Handed and Double-Handed Championships for young women ages 13 to 18, with no private coaching allowed. U.S. sailing coaches were provided to enhance the experience, sailing skills, competitiveness, and networking within this group of athletes. I'm not leaving the podium tonight without taking the opportunity to salute the sailing prowess of our very own Coach Callahan, who qualified for... who qualified for and who will compete in the Pan American Games representing the United States, along with our outstanding junior sailor, Matteo Dale, representing St. Croix. Let's give it up for Matteo. They start next weekend in Chile, which is amazing. Amanda never talks about her own sailing. She never talks about herself. She just sails and excels in the sunfish category, and because sunfish is not an Olympic class option, the Pan American Games are actually one of the top international showcases and venues for that championship. So once again, please join me in raising the roof again, supporting Amanda and Mateo at the Pan American Games. In closing, it does not get better than this. This is an incredible event. The sense of belonging, the sense of community within this crowd, the traditions, and how you feel about each other in this tradition, it's phenomenal. Every college student, every family should be able to experience something like this. But few do, you do. So enjoy tonight, enjoy Captain's Cup, and we're off to dinner, thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. We're gonna kick off uh, the dinner part with a little video um, to thank everybody who has made our, our fleet happen. And hopefully everybody can hear it. Sailing is all about being in a community and with Roger Williams Sailing Team, 
I found my people and my family. I've gotten so many great opportunities and gotten to meet so many amazing people through sailing that naturally I just wanted to continue it at Roger Williams University. It's always been something I've been extremely passionate about from the time I was seven years old. The new fleet has enabled our team to actively compete at the highest level of collegiate sailing and it's just been, we've been so blessed this year to have this. Thank you guys for this wonderful new fleet. We really feel blessed to have received it and it's really added a lot to our sailing program here at Roger Williams. It really means the world to us. We're so excited to be able to sail these boats every day. Thank you guys so much. We are looking forward to a phenomenal season and we could not have done it without you. Thank you! Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say that those are our captains, Carly, who's down at St. Mary's today, uh, and Claire Buckley, who's here, and Hank. I didn't give them any heads up that they were going to film that that day. And I think they did a really great job, and it was uh, very much from the heart. So great work, everybody. Um, hold on for one second. I really can't see from here. So I have the privilege every year of uh, recognizing an alum. We have a bunch of uh, former winners, well a few anyways, former winners of the Alumni Award in the house. Uh, Mac is one of them. Maybe he's the, oh, uh, he might be the only one. Anyways. We're really fortunate to have an actively engaged uh, set of alumni who come back to this regatta every year, who when I call them on day of giving, they, they heed the call. Uh, when I call them and I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm sailing a regatta in Florida, can I stay on your couch? They're like, absolutely. Uh, I get to see them at regattas uh, outside of college sailing all the time. It's so great to have um, alums that are, like I said, really involved with the program. And we like to recognize them at the Captain's Cup. The person who's winning the Alumni Award this year is not here, and in fact, they're the parents of an alum. But I wanted to recognize them uh, as I mentioned them earlier today, Giannis mentioned them earlier today, uh, the McGraw family who made the lead gifts to make our fleet possible. And as has been stated many times today, many of us, not everybody, but many of us in this room were introduced to sailing through our family members. And that love of sailing is passed down from generation to generation. For most of our sailors, those formative sailing experiences end up turning into passion, and that passion literally fuels what we do every day on the water. That passion gets you through practice in February when it's really, really cold, when it's maybe snowing, and maybe when you're on the far side of the golf course and you have a westerly uh, blowing at you. Donald McGraw loved sailing and he passed that love of sailing down to his sons, Peter, who graduated in 76 from Roger Williams, Josh, his brother, who was a parent of a 2005 grad, David, parent of a 2010 grad, and their uh, other brother, Robin. The McGraws also passed down their sail number, number 44. It had such significance to the McGraw family and particularly at, at, for David. He petitioned, he petitioned the postal service in Osterville to get his address changed to number 44. Like that's how serious they were about that sail number and how much it means to them. And that was a little bit behind the design for this year's uh, logo. Along with their love of sailing, the McGraws also have a love of Roger Williams. As I mentioned, Peter is an alum. Liz is a 2010 alum, Aaron, 05 alum, all proud graduates of Roger Williams. David, the dad of Liz, he's also got two other kids, but we'll, we'll leave it with Liz. Um, he has been our fairy godfather. He's been, um, I got introduced to him pretty early on, and every, every chance that he's on campus, which is rare, but we get to go grab a lunch, come to the sailing center. He regales me with amazing stories about his rides on Sturgis and the folks that he meets along the way. Um, but they have truly 
made such an indelible mark on our whole entire program. As Giannis mentioned earlier today, they helped us get to the finish line when we were doing the Sailing Center campaign. In fact, the, the classroom in the upstairs is named for their dad, uh, Donald McGraw. Again, he handed down that passion, that love of sailing. And their lead gifts to this fleet allowed us to get this new fleet along with the Matthews, the Recklers, and the Hunts, and the Liebens. Outside of their philanthropy and leadership on various boards, the, the Cape Cod Academy, the Mystic Seaport, just to name a couple. As I mentioned, David's just like a genuinely great guy and I really wish that he were here tonight so we could all thank him for their contributions. Uh, unfortunately, they have like a family medical situation that won't, didn't allow them to be here tonight. But he's such a great person. I would love for you all to meet him. He's a sensational storyteller, super down to earth. A real pleasure to hang with. He's also an expert. Uh, he he um, refurbishes vintage motorcycles. That's his passion. He would he he loves sailing, but he would rather be riding. Uh, oh, as you can tell, that's just one of his bikes. I think that might be his favorite. I've seen him in, on that bike more than any other bike. But he's an avid rider. The McGraw Foundation is focused. Um, that's their, their giving arm. The McGraw Foundation is focused on advancing community efforts in health, education, and human services. They recently named um, the McGraw Distinguished Chair in Emergency Med Medicine at Brigham and Women's. They support substance abuse and prevention, the Spalding Rehab Adaptive Sports Centers, hospice care, on and on. Their generosity goes far and wide, and we are beyond grateful that their generosity extends to us. Uh, the, the David and the McGraw family have made a truly transformative impact on our team, and I'm delighted to recognize them in there, even though they're not here tonight. And uh, thank you, David. Uh, we'll, Kate and I will have lunch with him when I get back from Chile, but I just wanted you guys to know that we have a fairy godfather out there who um, loves, and as I mentioned earlier today, you know, continues to support what we're doing, believes in what we're doing, and we, we just love them to pieces. So, anyways, that's it. At this point, I would like to welcome to the podium our race committee for the day. We have Emmett Neville, class uh, of 25 who has ably assisted Dom. I see you hiding back there. Dom, come on up. This was taken yesterday before the rain. We, we have a small scoring error. We thought somebody was meant to be scored OCS, but we will get to that part later. We'll start with, and I forgot to. They, they cleared themselves, evidently. I didn't see it. Anyways, we'll get right to it. Top three. <laughs> All right. Well, first off, I want to say thank you to everybody. It was a great day. Nice and warm and dry. Uh, I had a great time out there. Everybody was super, super great, super nice. Uh, great racing, not too much contact, which was good. Um, not that I saw, apparently a lot at the Windward Mark, but all right, yeah, so that's all we got. We're gonna start off with the family division, the best division by far. They were the only ones who weren't over every single time. <laughs> All right, so let's bottom up. We had Jacob and Jersey. Give it up. Keith and Zach. I'm just going to rip through them now. We can clap at the end. Uh, Tim and Will. Leo and Frankie. Karen and Drew. Kaylin, Casey, and Cameron. Jack Roman and Kate Roman. Uh, Alyssa and Tim, Jay and Tavia, Katie and Ethan, uh, Eric and Oliver, and now we're getting to our top three. 
So in third we have Joanne and Addie. In, oh, if top three has got to come up here, we've got uh, some wonderful mugs for you. Are we going to have them all stay up here? Um. Got to get a picture. All right, congratulations, guys. In second place, we had Peter and Mary. And finally, in first place, Aiden and Darcy. Give it up. I'd like to thank my parents for coming. This is our first Captain's Cup. Uh, this is my mom's first time ever sailing FJ, so I think that was a good experience for her. Maybe uh, one Captain's Cup she'll, she'll drive and I'll crew and we can, we can run it back. So I'd also like to thank Emmett and Dom for being race committee. I was it last year, so I know how it goes. A little bit of a burden, but I think they did great. Thank you, everybody. All right, let's give up one more time for the family division. All right. So we're going to go, we're going to go screw first, family screw division. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, the screw division is... I'm, I'm, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. Slowly but surely. The screw division is, if you're a crew, normally, you skip her, so screw. Right? We got it. All right. It is a tough crowd. You guys, I'm bombing here. Um, all right, so we've got... <laughs> In fifth place, in our screw division. I'm gonna wait for silence. Um, what do we have? Leonard and Ruby. Yeah. Fourth place, Claire and Mike. Set third place, Katie. And Jeff. And Betsy. Oh, third place. Come on up. Oh. Ye oh, yes? Yeah? Well, you leave, we got to get the picture. In second place, we've got Hank and Katie. Give it up. Yeah. 
Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm like in the back. And in first place, we have Marin and Rob. Congratulations. I would like to thank my mom and dad for coming. And um, yeah, I don't really have anything. And my sister. <laughs> and it was a fun day today. Congratulations. All right, now we are going on to our elite siblings. In sixth, we've got Max and Matthew. Woo! Uh, then we've got Olivia and Lexi, Julian and Luke, Ethan and Wyatt. Third place, very, yeah, we very close racing in our elite siblings division. It is what it. It sounds like. It sounds like you're blaming. Congratulations! You gotta get the. You gotta get. Second, we've got Mike and Katie. It's worth noting that um, Katie fired her dad uh, after they ended up in the water three times last year. And even though she thought she was safe with her brother, they ended up capsizing in the last race. And finally, to end off our elite siblings, we've got Joey and Lucy winning it. By a large margin, might I add. They had a big buffer there. Congratulations. Um, I'd like to thank my parents and my brother for coming out. Uh, and for everyone else that <laughs> raced against us this weekend. Oh, and obviously Riley. Yeah. Chris, you're the best. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, this is. You'll see it, you'll, you'll hear it in a second here. So we've got a, a slight, <laughs> slight scoring issue here. Sorry about that, guys. It's too late for that now. All right, we're just going with it. All right, guys? All right, uh, this is a big one. All right. 
Should I do them all? All right. Starting from bottom up. Matthew and Dawson. Uh, Michael and Madeline. Mike and Claudia. Hockey and Riley. Chuck and Becky. Bob and Maggie. Michaela and Taryn. Uh, we're Kelsey and Chris. I tried. I didn't see the eye. Riley and Molly. Uh, Martim and BB. Oh, oh, actually, I didn't say that. Forgot, forget, forget I said that. Uh, Mac and Abby. Connor and Jennifer. Cameron and Grace. Ed and Megan. George and Cal. Johnny and Annika. Oh, that's actually fourth place. Yeah. Everybody did. Uh, so fourth, Johnny. Danny and Hallie. Third place, come on up. Does anybody here represent them? Are they here? We can get two. I got one, at least I got one of them, right? I think you got Congratulations, guys. In second place, we have Chase and Julia. Give it up for them. Okay. And those, unfortunately, these guys last year did just so well in the elite siblings division that they've now been promoted to honorary alone. Julia's not here. Yeah, congratulations, Tom. Do you want to get the picture with me? <laughs> All right. Our team. Due to the scoring, we had a little bit of scoring, you know, but in first place, we have Martim and BB. Congratulations, guys. We did do a circle. What do you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say uh, this is a fantastic event. It's our your third, fourth event. This is my second. And I just want to say thank you so much to Amanda for hosting this event. It's fantastic. So many new boats. We're lucky to have these boats. Remember my freshman year, we had six brand new 420s. And this is a pleasure to have like 18 FJs. It's fantastic. Great program. Very happy. All the alums here are Really happy to have these boats. So great job, Amanda, and the rest of the team. And you know, good luck the rest of the season. Go Roger Williams Hawks! Woo! Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the Crash Cup. The Crash Cup this year goes to someone who, 
I don't know if you guys, if you were here last year, he stood up in front of everybody before we went out racing day one and told us all how we needed to be very, very careful with the old boats. Not to hit anything, we needed to keep them nice, keep them clean, no more dings. This year, he did not make that speech. Instead, he decides to probably do quite the opposite and just, I think, hit. If it was on the water, he tried to hit it. Um, and it's very disappointing. Uh, to see from, from him, you know, one would think this new fleet of boats, after that wonderful speech last year, we'd have a little bit of respect for all the new gel coat, but I guess not. So without further ado, this year's Crash Cup goes to Mac. Not Abby. Abby was very clear that this was not on her. It rests solely with Mac. Forgot to say this at the beginning, but I also have to thank Dom so much for helping me out today. Give it up for Dom. I would not have been able to do my job so well if it wasn't for him. So thank you everybody and enjoy the rest of your evening. going to give everybody a quick kind of rundown about where we are, what we're doing, how things are going. Danny Petrovic is good for the record. <laughs> so highlight, highlights are kind of a funny thing, right? Like highlights are like the Instagram version of what's actually going on, right? Like you just show the shiny glossy things that happen. And truth be told, we had a really good year last year. We did. Last, last spring, by, by the time spring rolled around, we were firing. We won a lot of races. Perhaps we didn't see as much adversity as we needed to. And I think by all accounts, we underperformed at Nationals. I don't think that is unfair to say. Um, as I said, it's easy to talk about unicorns and rainbows. It's less hard to talk about the things that didn't go according to plan. As you know, we're always trying to compete at the highest level of, of college sailing, and sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to go. We, we discovered at Nationals, a little too late, that maybe we weren't the team that we thought we were. Spent the whole summer thinking about why that was. I think everybody who was there at Nationals also did a lot of reflection. At the end of the day, we ended up 17th out of 18 at the women's semifinal, which was not disappointing at all. We started um, a pr pretty much a whole new team at that semifinal, and they had some success and built some confidence at that event, I think. Then we got to team racing nationals, and we ended up finishing sixth in a three-way three tie with Yale and Dartmouth. Uh, after some after-hours shenanigans that Brown pulled to like slide onto the podium, one, one race behind them, very, very close racing, but we had, we had bigger goals than that. And we, we struggled pulling it together after tough losses. And then a devastating 10th out of 18th at the semifinals and not moving on to the finals. We were a much better team than how we performed at the end. And I think a lot of us carried, well, I know I did, carried a lot of, everyone's really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, this is the beauty of sports, right? You have 
the opportunity to fail, and we didn't fail enough in the season to learn the lessons that we needed to learn. And we have preached that in years past. We, we need to lose races. You learn more from the losses than you do from the wins. And so the, the lessons taken away, from, taken away from last year is how do we build a better team? How do we have stronger communication? How do we lean on each other a little bit more? And those are the things that I think have been fueling us quite a bit this season, or at least for me anyways. Uh, you know, in years past, we've done team dinners or we've gone to play laser tag. And I said, hey, we're not going to do that stuff. We're going to do a different type of team building, right, this year, so that when we get to nationals and we, we're coming off the water off of a pretty tough loss, we're going to be able to turn to each other and say, hey, we got this. Let's build each other back up. So that's what we've been doing this spring and this fall. Um, I think it's been motivating rather than debilitating. And so now we'll get to the highlights of this season, the Instagram version, but also the real version. As John King mentioned earlier, Matt, oh no, he didn't mention it, but he mentioned Matthew and I are going to the Pan Am Games, but also Matthew is, was just selected to go to the single-handed nationals later on this season. <laughs> And I would, be, I would be remiss to not mention the highlights from sort of last spring. Molly Matthews, who's here, was named as an ICSA All-American crew. And just last, yay. Yeah, just last night, like a whole, I don't know how many months later, just last night, nine sailors from the team were named to the ICSA All-Academic team, and they are all in the room tonight, which is awesome. We have Hank Bailey, Will Bailey, Katie Benha, Aiden Hooland, Monica Irene, Molly Matthews, Cal Robbins, Cameron Wood, and Grace Woodcock all made the, the all-academic team. The, the women's team this season has uh, gotten a huge boost and uh, not only by the incoming class, but also we were able to hire Stephanie Hudson, who's coming to practice, coach practice once a week and is working specifically with our women's team to get them firing, which we're psyched about. They just finished third at the Atlantic Coast Tournament last weekend at Brown. And speaking of adding coaches, we are delighted we are delighted to welcome back Riley Reed as an assistant coach this season. And as it is right now, we have a team down at St. Mary's at the Atlantic Coast Championship. And uh, earlier today, they were sitting in third. I think they had a tough last set, and they're sitting in sixth. So we wish them all the luck going into tomorrow. Um, I know they can pull it together. They said it was really quite windy down there. A lot of fun. Um, and so that's, that's sort of where we are this season. So that's a quick snapshot. What you see on Instagram is, is somewhat of reality. And then we're going to keep plugging away. We've got big goals again this year. At the beginning of the year, I said to the captains, we had our preseason meeting, said to the, to the upperclassmen, we're not messing around. This is our year to really put it together. And we got a lot of good lessons from last year, so we're happy to take those forward. Okay, that's it. I wanted to take a, take a second to, you know, in, in the past, the Captain's Cup has been one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. And the day of giving, and I've always like leaned on Riley Eager, giving him about three minutes notice to come up here and drive pledges to buy new sails or buy trailers for our J22s or whatever the case is, whatever, whatever big thing we're, we're hoping for on our wish list. The, uh, this year, the day of giving um, was structured a little bit differently and we wanted to, I did a lot of outreach to all of our alums and uh, former folks who, um, former parents and whatnot who aren't here today. And they came in huge for the team during the day of giving more than a hundred donors to our sailing program over the day of giving with some more donations still coming in. And um, it's really tremendous to have this level of support for the team from parents, 
grandparents, alumni, friends of the program. Um, it is really, really heartwarming. And we need, we, we definitely need all your support. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the lessons that we learned last year, we needed stronger communication. And so one of the things we want to do again is bring Betsy Butterwork, Butter, Rick, Butterworth, not Butterworth, um, back to work with the team. She made a, a huge impact on our team in 2020. Um, so we plan to use some of that for good. Uh, probably some of the money raised will go to offset some of our training, training trips, both the winter and the spring training trip, and other um, team, team initiatives that, uh, like, like I mentioned before, but just intentional team bonding activities that we can do and our really critical training trips. So thank you to everybody who gave. If, um, if when I post the photos from today online and you happened, as, um, as Emmett mentioned earlier, but if you happen to notice that you, you uh, were touching another boat, I'll also post the link. And if you want to make an extra donation as a result of you touching those other boats, we would welcome that. And finally, just to kind of wrap up the night, I want to thank again all of the people who made tonight possible. Um, some behind the scenes folks to start, Heidi and her special events team in the back, who's always trying to keep me on time and focused. Uh, she's very difficult wrangling me, so she does a great job. I want to also thank our friends at Bon Appetit, they, there's nobody who takes more pride in food service than the folks at Bon Appetit. I mean, I know I eat there at least twice a day, um, but they love what they do. They serve amazing food and they take a lot of pride in what they do. So thank you guys for amazing lunch and dinner tonight. We had a full alumni division this year um, and I, I can't thank the what Bob Coyle refers to as the usual suspects in the back table, 16, I think you guys are at, but thank you guys for continuing to, or I don't know where they are. Anyways, oh, there they are, there they are. Thank you for continuing to show up and we appreciate you so much coming out in the pouring rain. The, the newer alums, class of 18 and 19 showing up in, and 20, showing up in full force. Um, it's. So much fun to see you guys. I wish we could hang out more and you guys can come back and hang anytime, all the time. <laughs> I, I have to go back to the list here just to make sure that I've got everybody. But huge thank you, as I said, to the McGraw family and the McGraw Family Foundation. Um, would like to thank the um, Matthews for donating the, the love boat to us today. Thank you to um, Hunt Lawrence via the Liebens family, the Reckler family, um, and we have the Benhas who have uh, kicked off, they have led off a sailing ambassador program and they are, um, we're really delighted that they were the first ones to jump on board with that and hopefully Kate will be reaching out to uh, invite more people to join our ambassador program. Then the raw bar, sorry, the cocktail reception was sponsored by our trustee, Marsha Morris. The raw bar tonight was sponsored by the Matthews. Oh, I read it in the wrong order, my bad. Um, and then uh, folks who spo sponsored programs, um, Michael Reuter, um, the Fishers, and uh, Eric Stocky. Thank you so much for all of your support in making today possible, making our boats possible, making all that we do possible. I always just close on, oh, we're gonna invite Claire and Hank up. Come on up. If you haven't heard from them enough today, definitely not, they're fantastic. Hello everyone and thank you for supporting the 19th annual Captain's Cup. On behalf of all team captains, myself, Carly Kiss, who's like currently at ACC's and Hank Bailey, we wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming and we also wanted to take some time to appreciate our alumni as well as all the families that 
help support this team. We could not do it without you. All right. Um, first, let's start with our alumni, the loudest group in the room. Very thankful for all the alumni that, uh, I'm just gonna grab this. Very thankful for all the alumni that show up and just make Roger what it is today. Hi, Darren. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to Cam Wood uh, for donating uh, 400 pairs of Clipper boots to the team at the beginning of the year. If you are wondering what those swaggy white and yellow boots are, those are Cameron Woods Clipper boots, and the whole team has been rocking them all season, and we've been loving them, so thank you so much, Cam. <laughs> but uh, overall, I just wanna say, um, you know, we have the most incredible, reliable, and generous alumni network that an undergraduate sailor could ever ask for. We love that so many alumni return to campus to assist coach at practice. And while our focus is to be the best on the water, our alumni network helps us to also be the best on shore. Our alumni, our alumni continue to be available to our current sailing program, whether it's postgraduate advice, helping soon-to-be graduates open doors to the corporate world, or simply exchanging anecdotal sailings, sailing experiences that an, only an older and wiser fellow sailor can provide. <laughs> As a soon-to-be alumni, I look forward to being a part of your legacy. Now for a little bit about the families. Your support definitely does not go unnoticed. There's no way we could compete at the highest level of sailing without you. Some big shout outs, one to the Franks. Kyle is currently not here, he's at ACC's, but his family is always just supporting us at regattas, bringing us donuts, everything to get through the day. The Dales, who have hosted St. Croix winter training trip for the last two years. Let's hear it for them. Shout out to the Matthews who provided meals to us during last nationals. You guys are phenomenal and this program is so lucky to have you all. And a major one to the entire Snyder family who hosted us last weekend at the Nevins when things didn't go exactly to plan. We are so lucky to have you as part of our big community. And with that being said, please enjoy the rest of your evening and understand the huge value you add to our community. Go Hawks. Sorry, one more announcement. Um, debrief video will be at eight Evelyn Drive. Max said for every time on the video we see him hit a boat, he'll donate $100. So we're at Cal's many times, eight Evelyn Drive. Let's see. It's, it's eight Evelyn Drive, Riley. And let's call that nine, 9 p.m. report time. 9 p.m. at eight Evelyn Drive. 